This week, Lisa Wilkinson stood down from her on-air duties after being personally shamed by the judge overseeing our nation's most high-profile rape trial. But that hasn't stopped her from creeping back into the headlines. This week, Channel 9 celebrated the 40th birthday of Breakfast Show today, and there was a surprise appearance from the former host. From two remarkable Today Show hosts to another now. Hi everyone. Well, they say that life begins at 40, but the truth is for many Australians, life has begun most days for the last 40 years by watching the Today Show. And going right back to the show's beginnings in 1982, I was one of them. When I first joined the Today Show, I thought if I can last six months in this chair, I'll be doing well. That's right, Lisa has been muzzled, she's vanished off air, and she is getting criticised by nearly everyone in the media. But for some reason, she has agreed to film what is essentially a commercial for a rival broadcaster, while her employer, Channel 10, picks up the pieces of her shoddy journalism. I don't miss the early hours or the sleep deprivation, but I do miss the people both the intensely loyal audience who watched us every single day and the many thousands we met out on the road, to the incredibly talented teams I was lucky enough to work with, both in front of and behind the cameras. Now, it is our understanding that this promotional video for Nine was filmed before the media firestorm benched Lisa Wilkinson, but executives at 10 who have had to fork out money to retain a barrister to defend Wilkinson's Logie speech and then issue threats of defamation to journalists, this must be a slap in the face. And why on earth would Lisa ever want to do this? She spoke in the video about how amazing all the staff were, but it wasn't long ago when Lisa was publishing her memoir, claiming the show was a toxic boys club. What's out there at the moment looks like I'm trying to attack Carl. But as you know in the book, that's not what I'm doing, she told the Daily Telegraph. I'm just not keeping men's secrets anymore. I think we as women, when we do that, all we do is strengthen the boys club and we do women a disservice. Well, the promo Wilkinson film for Nine tells a very different story and comes at a very awkward time for Ten. After all, Ten has its own breakfast show, Studio Ten, and yes, it is terrible and it will never compete with Seven or Nine. But why would 10 let their star, highly paid journalist plug another network? I hope for Lisa's sake they knew about it before it went to air. And Sophie, I know you are following the Lisa Wilkinson saga very closely. Uh, a, a promotional video for her former employer at a time she is so under fire and her own network are having to defend her with some expense. It seems rather jarring to me. Well, Jack, this is really a remarkable turn of events, given that Lisa Wilkinson put out her book uh, in the last six months or so, where she was very critical of her former employer, uh, quite disparaging towards her former co-host, Carl Stefanovic. And now she's put out this glowing report to Channel 9. Uh, I think this is a problem in the media, Jack. It's becoming... The journalists are becoming the story. It's all about them. We're mm. seeing that with these birthday celebrations at the ABC. We're now seeing it at the Today Show. Uh, I don't think it was necessary to, for her to put together such a long video, but let's not remember, she's no longer on Channel 10 at the moment. She's taken several weeks off following that Logie speech she gave that derailed the Brittany Higgins... Uh, trial that's happening in court. So I think this is a bit odd timing for her to come out and give this glowing report to an employer that she effectively bagged. I mean, remember that story when she said she was buying a can of tuna in one of the supermarkets in Sydney and got that fateful call from her employer to say it was mm. game over? And now she's talking about them like they're all wonderful. It's very odd. <laughs> and I'm shocked that Channel 10 would allow her to do that and allow this to air at such a, a problematic time for Lisa when she is off air from her own uh, program, The Project. 
Daisy, it's it's really interesting. I, I don't I don't think any employer in the media industry would would appreciate somebody plugging a, a rival. But obviously, as Sophie makes some really good points, she's been really critical of these people. But now, conveniently, it's it's family. I miss them. They were they were wonderful. What happened to the Toxic Boys Club? I know. I was really kind of shocked and perplexed uh, is the word I would use when I saw this for that exact reason. I mean, one, she's she's like, it's like a dishwashing detergent commercial that she's put forward here, this glowing little <laughs> review, like a commercial for a, a rival network. And, but also, too, I remember um, when she split from, from that network, she was not happy. She was going on about, you know, um, pay equality for women and how she didn't get paid enough and not as much as Carl, yes. even though, of course, Carl Stefanovich is a, a much bigger star and had made a much bigger uh, commitment to Nine than she had. So who knows, maybe he actually deserved a little bit more money. But hey, look, that's another debate entirely. But well, it was da Daisy, so Daisy weird. that's, that's she such comes a good out point. With this lovey dovey thing. <laughs> That's such a good point, Daisy, because we know that Carl was committed to Channel 9 and that's why he was paid more. And Lisa mm. had all these side hustles such as writing for Huffington Post, etc. So she wasn't worth as much because she wasn't exclusive. And that's what it really came down to. It came down to exclusivity. 